Hey After Buzzers, welcome to Spotlight On. Today I'll be talking to the actress Diane Doan about Vikings, descendants, and so much more, so stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey After Buzzers, welcome. We're talking to Diane Doan, who's on the epic show, Viking. This this background music is phenomenal. I'm gonna say that. Do you get like goosebumps every time you hear the theme song? It's getting ready to be your show. Um, my yeah. Well, not goosebumps, Do you feel but like my it's your heart. show. No, God. <laughs> no, I'm just excited to be on it. To be honest. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's rewind just a hair, so okay. lead people in to how you got to Vikings. Well, first of all, so you did reality show dancing, eh? Uh, Up in Canada. So you think you dance? Uh, yes. Yes. I did that when I was, um, I had to be like 18 or 19 years old. I think the video clip said 19. Yes. yes. And I was, oh, you'd know more. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I was, it was second season, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, after high school, I moved to Vancouver because I'm from a smaller city just outside of Vancouver. Um, I moved to Vancouver to try acting and I fell, I, I grew up dancing and I mm -hmm. kind of fell back into the dance scene. And so you think kind of came up and, and we did that and I made it to tr Toronto mm -hmm. and wow. then right up until top 20 and then I um, I got cut off oh. for the better. But I was gonna say reality show is a whole other ball game, right? I did not <laughs> know what to expect to be honest. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was um, it was like a little eye opener because sure, I just, at that point, I didn't really appreciate all the cameras, you know, always <laughs> in my face trying to find a story. But, yeah. you know, it was such a great platform for all of my friends that um, that got to be on the show mm -hmm. just to kind of jumpstart their careers in, in the dance scene. So, yeah, I almost went back for a second season, but unfortunately, I was contracted for um, a contemporary company, so I, ah. I couldn't come back for season three. Do you feel dance has lent to your acting in terms of movement and ability to get into character? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, luckily, it's just another tool in my tool mm -hmm. belt that I can always pull out. And so far in, in most of my, um, or at least my bigger ones like Descendants and mm -hmm. Vikings, just to be able to know your body and mm -hmm. body movement has been so important. And we did all the dance scenes in, in um, Descendants. And funny enough, they didn't realize I was a dancer until <laughs> we showed up to rehearsal. But I auditioned to be a dancer before I even auditioned for Lonnie. Oh. Yeah, and then I came into the room and I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but I thought Kenny <laughs> would remember me from the dance audition. It was just like, whew, nothing. So I got to like start all over again oh, and then good. I booked the role and then, you know, fast forward to dance rehearsals and they were like, oh, you can dance. Okay, great. Let's, okay. So like, then, that makes things easier. Yeah, a lot easier. And then for people who don't know, you, who do you play on Descendants? I play Lonnie, um, the who daughter is? of Mulan. That's so cool. Yeah, I grew up watching Mulan, so that was, was like a little childhood dream come true. You're like, well, if I can't be Mulan, be exactly. your daughter. Next but best now thing. I hear they're making like a live action. <gasps> so part of me is like, damn You're like, it. I know. Well, but you it's, can still it's, audition. Uh, that would be a little weird to play the daughter and then, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's people who play superheroes, different superheroes in different movies, so. Really? Yes. Like okay. who? Um, oh, uh, Ryan Ryan Re Reynolds. Yes. Okay. And, you know. Yes. So. True. If he does it, you can do it too. Very true. <laughs> Let's see. And then how, what do you think you brought of yourself to the role of being Mulan's daughter? And being a fan of Mulan. What did I bring to her? Or what did you want to make uh, sure oh, yes. you did? Right. So... <laughs> I'm very prideful of this, but I think <laughs> Mulan is like one of the few Disney princesses that, you know, isn't a damsel in distress. Mm -hmm. Like she's kind of a badass. Yep. She's very confident and um, she's very sure of herself. So I wanted to make sure um, that I brought that into Lonnie. And it's it kind of happens throughout the movie that I'm not, she doesn't start off as a cheerleader or a popular mm. girl. Um, and it wasn't until the villain kids came in did she actually find her little clique uh, of people. So it's the mm -hmm. same thing. It was like she kind of beats to her own drum. Nice. Yeah. And then we have a picture. So you actually you do. think we do of your doll. Oh, yes. I was going to say, when I saw this, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I added that. I okay. actually had to go into Toy Toys R Us, was it, in L.A.? Yeah. 
um, the week of the premiere, and I There's bought my own doll. doll for my cousin. That's cute, though. <laughs> it's just did, really did random. Did you make sure to sign the box? God, no. I told her I wouldn't. It's Aww. just awkward. It's so weird. It's well, so strange true. to me. Well, if they're going to keep it, that's weird. But if they were going to sell it, they should. <laughs> yes, because it's going to be worth so much money, you guys. Hey, you never know. No. Yeah. It's well, pretty, then it's amazing, though. Absolutely. Yeah. You have your own doll. That's like I have what? two, technically. Oh. And they're all hanging on my little fireplace at home. <laughs> and <laughs> That's I come cute. Up, yeah, it's it's really surreal. Yeah, why not get, get a doll? If you had a doll, I think if I had a doll, I would definitely have that on display and be like, yes, that's that's me. <laughs> did they do any, It was it more just of your character, or did you, were you involved in the doll making at all? Or? No, it was mostly the, the character and just the like outfits. The Got and, it. Yeah. Cute. How was that outfit to wear? That looks very fun, bright, and colorful. Well, that's the thing about Lonnie, was the thing that was <laughs> so polar opposite of me is that she just wore so much pink and so much sparkle. And so every day in wardrobe, I'd open my trailer up, and I was like, okay, hello, because I'm just all black or, or grays and mm-hmm. neutrals. And so that was fun to kind of go back to all the jewelry and accessories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the big hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, how much? Did they, like, uh, tease it a lot to get you fluffy hair? Or? There was a lot of extensions involved. Uh, um, well, you have pretty long hair anyways, too. Yes, but not enough for mm. for Disney. So there was a lot of curling and, and f- fluffing, <laughs> should we say. <laughs> that makeup chair, you're like, oh, I'm back I again. I loved it. Are you kidding? Yeah. To get pampered? And it was the exact Aww. opposite than Vikings, where, like, you get no makeup and... Oh, well, there we go. Springboarding yeah. into Vikings. You go yeah. from Disney happy, like pretty show into vikings what is that transition like i mean i couldn't have asked for a better show to come off of just because it is so different and Mm -hmm. i i didn't necessarily luckily i booked vikings um before descendants even aired so i i didn't really get into the bubble of no typecasting yeah not quite not quite yet so it, it was cool to be able to film a show in ireland that's you know, very violent and it's mm-hmm. drama and it's mm-hmm. period. And then all of a sudden in summertime, there's <laughs> Disney dolls of me coming out and the cast of Vikings had no idea. So it was this little That's joke funny. that they'd call me princess on set. But um, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better show. And it's just the complete opposite mm-hmm. of, of my Disney experience. You want to talk about how you fa- got the role for Vikings? Yeah. Um, it's a Canadian Irish co-production. Mm-hmm. So I'm I was Vancouver based, mm-hmm. um, and the audition came through Toronto. So me and my agent put a, a self tape because I wasn't gonna fly all the way to Toronto. It's just too far. So we put a self tape on. I didn't think anything of it. I thought the chances of me getting the show were just next to none because I watched mm-hmm. the show and it said in the breakdown that you know potential, not love interest, but you're gonna be working up opposite of the lead, Travis Fimmel. Well, you know. And I just thought, you know, <laughs> looks wise, and they're aging the show like maybe mm. too young. Um, totally forgot about it. Almost a month later, it came back, and they flew me out to Ireland to test mm. and to chemistry read with Travis and Alyssa, who plays Oslog. And then they kept me there for like six months. Was that, ner- were you nervous at all to go do a chemistry read? Because, I mean, acting is one thing, but anytime if it's romantic or chemistry, right. I mean, chemistry in terms of just, acting together but from a scene i saw there's a little which bit of one did there. you see uh i was i saw a pretty pg one so you're good oh, okay we're good um, <laughs> episode but, five is all i'm saying uh-huh. um but what was that like going into were you nervous having to read with him well, and after watching the show right funny enough i'm so glad it happened the way he did um my agent just said it was like a big audition essentially he's Mm. like it's just gonna be in a room there's gonna be tons of producers (laughs) and you know if you're lucky the cast will be there if not you know they're just a reader so Mm. it's just a bigger audition don't stress and then I get there and it's like so I just had no way of prepping or getting nervous for it but they just threw me in hair and makeup like full costume oh wow hair and makeup walked me up to this beautiful set that's like candle lit and there's I don't think I've told this sort of story yet. Ooh, um, exclusive. <laughs> yeah, there's like a camera and directors and then Travis walks in. So I just had no idea how big of a deal it was really. Sure. Um, and I don't know how it went. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of like blacked out because I was so nervous. But it ended in the better. Yes, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And then uh, I heard that you did a little bit of research for your audition tape. So Yeah. 
why don't you talk about how often in auditions there's not much an actor can go off of mm -hmm. from a scene. So mm -hmm. what kind of preparation did you do? Well, sometimes if you're lucky, they'll give you like the full script or mm -hmm. the first couple episodes or something, if mm -hmm. you're lucky. Um, but something like Vikings, it was just a very vague, you know, mm. 20 to mid-20s Asian female. Um, I don't even remember what they said in the breakdown, but I guess the research that I did was I made sure I wanted to know um, what dynasty she was from mm -hmm. and, and what rights women had back mm -hmm. then if she, you know, and, and luckily back then she, um, women had a right to education and mm -hmm. choosing marriage and so it was very liberal almost. Mm. Um, so I brought that, I made sure to bring that to the character and then later on you find out she is in fact the emperor's daughter. Uh -huh. I think that was a couple episodes ago. So with that, there was a sense of power that okay. was in me, which is why a lot of fans were very upset when I first came on and they were like, she's not a slave. She, you know, how dare she look at him in the eyes? And in my head, I'm like, just <laughs> hold, like, on. hold on, let's calm down here. Just wait a couple more episodes and you'll find out why I'm like that. Yeah. So your character has quite a bit of depth then, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like to say that. I like <laughs> think so. Thank you. And we have some pictures here. So we got... Why don't we talk? Let's look I'm at this first one. That one looks... Oh, it looks so sweet. I think that episode, that scene was cut, actually. Oh. It was supposed to be this past week's. Okay. So we got the next one. So is your hair... Is this a wig? It's a bob? Yes, it's a wig. It's okay. But it looks pretty it looks really damn good. real, right? Yeah. Well, I just wonder because there was photos of you with long hair and short hair. So, so I, I didn't come know in the context with, like, of the show. Freakishly long hair. Yeah. And then they actually tried to, con they did a very good job of convincing me to actually cut my hair. Mm, I think this is the next photo, but you I have didn't. the long hair. There we go. Yes, I didn't. That looks it. really pretty, though, even though it's like dirty and. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt involved. <laughs> so did they do any basic makeup and then put the dirt on or because um, you mentioned no makeup so yeah they did do a little it's so funny now the vanity comes out um <laughs> they did do a little bit of makeup i have but very minimum sure. like it was the ongoing joke that i would be a little bit of a brat on i wasn't but between me and my makeup artist of just like demanding contour or <laughs> something and she yeah, would like, just tinted moisturizer bb cream please anything <laughs> and the joke was that she was always like no diane you can't you can't but then when the dirt came in it's like a spray on dirt oh she yeah. would like, no it's fine it's like okay. makeup it's water-based she would like contour nice? with the dirt and i'm like yes <laughs> is it so. like a wet kind of thing when they spray yeah it? like they'll spray my hands and i just Ah. And it's all dirty, but then I'm a little bit OCD, so I'll always wash it off. <laughs> and then they have to spray me, and yeah, I had to get used to that really quickly. How does it feel to take a shower at the end of the day and get all that off? Oh, it was well, with the wig, <laughs> mm -hmm. to make it as realistic as possible, they have to like glue your hair down. Oh. And if we're shooting, if we're shooting like five days of the week, if I wash my hair every day, so it ended up being like I would just sleep in this gunk. Mm. For and on the fifth day when I'm just like massage, it was amazing. So. You're just like oils and stuff. Just to it was that disgusting. Out. But oh. for me, I'm like it'll save me an hour in the makeup chair. So yes, sure. I won't wash my hair. Don't worry. And she's like, are you sure? Like your scalp might be a little sticky. I'm like, it's fine. I'd rather that than come in at like 4:30 in the morning and you have to plaster my hair every single day. So it was just since your hair is longer, did they braid it and like wrap it around? Yeah, or braided, okay. wrapped, mm -hmm. pinned, glued, mm. netted. It was a whole. Wow. Don't wear wigs if you don't have to. <laughs> it's they not that glamorous. And how were the costumes to wear, like, period piece like that? Because you go from bright, colorful Disney yeah. to, like, grimy. Uh, though some of those, you had a nice outfit, at least one of them, so. Yeah, well, Joan Bergen was um, the costume, mm -hmm. the, the head of the costume um, department, and she's, I mean, she did the tutors, and mm -hmm. her resume is just phenomenal, but the thing that I really appreciated and loved about the show was just everything is so um, detailed, mm -hmm. and they put, they, I mean, e every single costume piece was handcrafted individually for the specific person. Nice. So we're always in, in fittings, and, mm -hmm. and so everything is very, you just feel very authentic in it. Mm. So it helped so much with, with the character work. And then later on with the color that comes into my character, it was just, they're trying to bring that, um, like that Asian flair in. Mm -hmm. So there's the reds and the golds and like even the little details on that red jacket, it's mm -hmm. like a dragon coming mm. up. So it's just these little beautiful details that I just 
she just added. It's beautiful. I love her. Was there any wardrobe pieces you'd want to take home? Of mine specifically? I did really like that jacket. Yeah. But the prototype of the pants, it looks like a big skirt because all the women on the show are always in like beautiful gowns mm-hmm. or legerthas in these badass mm-hmm. shield made outfits. But it was like this pants with a cape. Oh. And the prototype was so cool. But then it ended up, it, we did like a mix of that so I could actually, oh, okay. so it was actually practical. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just anything really. Now, for those not terribly familiar with the show, just from seeing the earlier images, most of the other characters are a little on the whiter side. And oh. then you come in there. <laughs> it's very politically correct. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm like, well, Caucasian persuasion. <laughs> um, and then you come on. What was that like? In a broad sense, any way you want to talk about it. Um, well, it, I, <laughs> I know. Sorry, that's, I know. Very it's one epic. of those questions. Uh, or um, like how fans talked about it, or anybody, how people received it. A lot of people it. were confused at first. Okay. Um, there was a lot, and it was really interesting. to. I, I tr- I've never had to deal with social media before. Mm. Um, so coming on to it, and I try not to read a lot, but you can't help it sometimes. You're curious of what people like or what sure. they think. A lot of people were against it or confused mm. on how it will tie into the show. I definitely felt um, a little bit of a pressure going in hmm. to a show, A, that's already been so well established, and then yeah. B, kind of representing a culture that has never been shown on the show yet. Mm-hmm. So um, it was nerve-wracking. Aww. And and a lot of people have been very positive to that's good. my character, so that's more than I could ask. And are you, do you feel now, since the character's been around for a little bit, mm-hmm. that you're getting better reception from the fans? Yeah, I mean... That's good. People are kind of, like, trying to decide what, you know, my motives are oh. and, and <laughs> the, back, the background yeah. of my character, which is so fun because usually it's just, like, another character on the show, but mm-hmm. they're actually invested in her and ah. her relationship with Ragnar, so it's it's been so great. How has that relationship acting gone? Of How is that to act with this character? someone you've already been watching right and now it's like you get to interact with them it was terrifying Aww. but like because so, i was so nervous sure. i'd never done a show before sure. um but and a he's, big epic show yeah and and to work with the lead of all mm-hmm. things it's it's an added pressure that wasn't necessary <laughs> but um he's phenomenal mm-hmm. i mean him and is is as an actor himself is so talented and um the work that he puts into mm-hmm. his character but also the show is so admirable. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had no complaints, and I got to work with him and a director specifically that I just, they pushed me so much, and I think it showed in in the few mm-hmm. episodes where my character really starts to grow, mm. um, which is four and onwards, and okay. so I'm just, yeah, I cannot complain. It's been so great, and, you know, the women are always like, ooh, what's it like working with Travis? But... <laughs> It's not as glamorous and intimate <laughs> as it comes off on screen. Like, you have to remember, we're in a room full of, like, All 20 men and watch. the cameras yeah. <laughs> and then everyone's surrounded. So it's actually, it's not like it's just him and I in a room together alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's what after they call cut. No! Oh, I'm my just gosh! Kidding. <laughs> no starting rumors. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Sorry to put you out there on That's that okay. one. <laughs> Got me a little flustered. Though. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, now, how? What is it like now being a more recognized character in social media? Because there is. You know, a fine balance of I, I do. I think that's a really good point of how you you want to interact with the fans, mm-hmm. and I think that's great that celebrities are. Do you feel like a celebrity? No, um, no, <laughs> that I don't. Celebrities are you know inter- engaging with the fans, and there are definitely fans out there who. Um, you are probably like, ah. but then other ones, you know, that could be great. So what I is don't that think, experience like? I don't think I've hit that point yet okay. <laughs> at all. I don't think I will ever. But um, it's been, I think it's been amazing to to experience this this phenomenon of a show that everybody mm-hmm. is so invested in and fans are so verbal. And it's mm. really cool to be a part of something that they they truly and deeply care so much about the show and where the characters go and mm. the storylines. Um, I'm really, I read the comments when I see them, but mm. mm-hmm. I try to answer and then I get lost. So I'm, I'm not very good at social media. But I will say when I've been doing these interviews, they always mention, oh, you're really good at, you know, showing and giving fans a little glimpse and for me it's like 
I take so many pictures of behind the scenes just to remember. So if mm. I can share a little bit and people enjoy seeing it, then that's great for me. Um, but you're right. There is a fine balance of like my personal life and work. And mm -hmm. usually my social media is more so work than personal life just because I do like to keep that little aspect to myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm totally understandable. Uh, actually, speaking of behind the scenes photos, how mm -hmm. uh, strict are they with you taking photos on set? I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, or is it, do you have to wait till after the episode airs kind of a no, situation? No, I'm, I'm very, I would like to think I'm very smart about it. Obviously, mm. you are not allowed to give spoilers away, and they say yeah. that right off the bat. Um, well, you don't want to ruin it for Yeah, the like, yeah. even with my, my wig, uh. when it was so, like a fan page that posted a picture of me and my short hair, and then history put it out, but they didn't say, you know, there was no story behind how I got the short yeah, hair, right. but for me, I was just like, no, like I wanted to be the first one, to, <laughs> or like after the episode aired. Um, so just being smart about it, like if I post a behind the scenes, there's just with my castmates, and there's no like sets that yeah. could spoil anything, or there's no pictures or scripts or anything. Just yeah. So if people are fans of Vikings, they should mm -hmm. follow you on Twitter because they'll see fun behind the scenes photos. Yeah, I try to post little <laughs> fun ditties, like nice little selfies you guys do. Yeah. Is or just, I'm the best creeper. Like, when oh, people yeah? don't know I'm taking a picture, I'm taking a picture of you. And then I post it on Do you say something Instagram. after? Like, you're all clicking, gotcha, and then run away? Oh, no. Just my hashtags are just... Yeah, there's one specific picture of, like, the back of um, Alex and Travis's mm -hmm. head on a boat. And I realize afterwards, I'm like, oh, did I spoil? But it doesn't matter. It's uh, out there. But just the big joke was that I'm just a huge creeper on set. <laughs> How, what is it like, and you talked a little bit about it, but what is it like joining this cast that's already been together for a mm -hmm. while and now you're the new person and is it also, what's that like and then are you age-wise like the baby of the group or? No, surprisingly like not. Ah. I thought I would be. Um, they were so kind. I mean, the f I think the first person I met was Gustav who plays Floki mm -hmm. and also he was my favorite character coming into the show. So oh, when fun. I saw him I freaked out a little bit. <laughs> um, Fangirl moment. Yeah, I, I literally ran up to him and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I just love you on the show. Oh. What did he you just, say to that? He was just like giggling. He's like, Oh thanks. I'm like, No, Aww. no, no. <laughs> like you're awesome. But he's the complete opposite of Floki. Like ah. he's super chill. You'd think mm -hmm. you'd meet him and he'd be zany mm -hmm. or a little quirky and he's not. He's mm. such a sweetheart. Um, not that there's anything wrong with mm. being zany. But, yeah, everybody kind of took me under their wings, which is amazing. Alexander's from Vancouver, so, mm -hmm. you know, that was a huge thing for us just to mm -hmm. be – because we're all stuck on this island, essentially, mm -hmm. um, together for, you know, a year, almost up to a year Wow. for some of them. So we all just got along so well, which is shocking because that doesn't always happen. Mm. And even now, you know, we're on hiatus now. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole bunch of us in LA. And so if you look on my Instagram, like I just, I hang out with Hugh and Karen who play Therese and Roland on the show. Mm -hmm. And Guy is in town and Catherine I just saw and Alexander. And we all just hang out, which is so rare. Nice. Yeah. So and then Vikings and, after hours. Yeah. Like, essentially, we had a little Easter getters. reunion. Yeah. Um, and then being the youngest, not at all. Alexander's younger than me. And oh. um, Georgia plays. Mm -hmm. um, Torvi on the show mm -hmm. and she's yeah there's I mean there's different age ranges and then there's like the little kids who play like the sun so yeah yeah and then um what so you what's up next with the show that you can tell us I don't think I can tell you you're anything. like nothing um do you know when it's supposed to be coming out or filming again or they just oh there's a mid-season finale so okay. we're doing the first 10 episodes now and then um and then there's another half of the season mm. we don't know when the air date is but i'm okay i don't even want to assume anything because i really don't know <laughs> but i think what the fans are really looking forward to is um like the resolution of the of ragnar and rollo's mm -hmm. kind of battle mm -hmm. so i think and i haven't seen anything either like i'm just with you guys like each each yeah. week is a new episode for me because I've never seen the footage compiled together yet. Oh, then I was going to ask. Yeah. Do you watch, essentially, like when it comes out with everybody else? I do. Else? I mean, I don't, <laughs> right now where I'm staying, I don't have cable, but I do like go online the next day because History is really great at posting it online. Oh, okay. Good for people to know. Go on History Channel. And I get nervous watching it live anyways. Um, uh, you don't sit there and live tweet with people? No. <laughs> I would be terrified to like <laughs> see what I see until the next day. Um... So I do watch it, mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah, I think they're, I mean, week after week, they're asking like, when is the battle scenes coming? Mm. When is the blood coming? Because that's what we're so used to on, on Vikings. And I think they're going to be very happy with the epic battle scene that's going to be coming up soon. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, and then going back to another question I had of, um, you, so you're stuck on this island and of how Ireland, much, which is beautiful by the way, how much time, yeah. How much time did you get to go check out the locals and, you know, walk around or where is it? You're stuck there. I mean, it all depends on each episode that we shoot because sure. some is, you know, you're more heavily involved and then mm -hmm. you're shooting five, six days a week. Mm hmm and then afterwards you just want to pass out. And then some days you only have one day a week and then mm -hmm. everybody, you know, with the exception of whoever's shooting will go out and explore. Oh. But we, I mean, they made sure to show me like the staples. They've been there for three years, mm. um, now on their fourth. So, so they know all the, guides. like the little hot spots. And uh. God, they just know everyone in Ireland it's, it, or in Dublin where we're based. Is it a smaller area, would you feel, since they know everybody or is it a pretty big city? Oh, it's pretty big, I'd say. Okay. Um, but then we shoot out of Wicklow. So it's, I mean, it's a little, but we're based in Dublin, usually. Mm -hmm. How are the locals with uh, you guys? Are they? Oh, they love Vikings. Aww. It's really cool. But no one knew me, and I oh. loved that. I loved it because I get to watch. You were anonymous. Yes. So I, I'd be the ones, like, taking pictures for the fans <laughs> with Alex or Goose. They're like, hey, can you take a picture? And you're like, yeah. No of course I can. Or, like, I get nervous. <laughs> like, they'd get, I'm not going to say attacked, but... You know, we get they get yeah. mobbed a little bit in the mm -hmm. daytime and mm -hmm. at night. It's just fun. Mm. But I would just, I, I've never been around that before, so I would just run and hide. Aww. And then I'd come out being like, I'll take pictures for you. Have you had anybody recognize you now, like walking no. around? No, not no, yet. no, not yet. No. Not yet. <laughs> no, I'm just a part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. How much do you relate to your character, do you feel? Um, at the beginning, it was... I mean, it was pretty easy to play. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a slave mm -hmm. in a situation where she's not in a land that she doesn't know and the mm -hmm. customs, exactly how I felt because mm. being like plopped in Ireland. Oh, there you go. Um, but throughout, you know, again, there's that sense of power and confidence mm. and I wanted to keep that in her. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say similar, similar to Lonnie, but there is that, you know, self-awareness and, and assuredness that I wanted her to have. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want her to play a victim just because she was a slave. Mm -hmm. So it's been really cool, the feedback that I've gotten. And, and yeah. Well, she has a little bit of an accent. Yes. Yes. So what was that like working on that and crafting that? Um, Paul is our dialect coach. And when I first auditioned, I didn't know what to do with it. Because all they <laughs> said was like, um, mid-Atlantic with a slight Asian undertone which I don't so know like, what, what that, that means. <laughs> so vague. So I tried a little something, and then when I booked it, he came up to me. He's like, so, um, yeah, we're going to have to work on that. We're going to have to make it a little bit more broken. And at first I was like, tell me what you want to do. Yeah. I'll work on it. But the beauty of him was Paul was like, oh, no, I don't create accents. Like I want mm. you to be able to, mm. to do it just so that you're so confident in it and sure of what you're, you are yeah. in the show. And so I took it for a couple weeks and I created that accent. And I mean, so far I haven't been called out on it yet. So no, it sounded interesting. And um, so I, I'm not terribly familiar with the show. I will be watching. Um, will I'm going to watch though? it now. Yeah. Well, will we, you? we <laughs> it's not yet, but maybe we'll be doing a Vikings after show. Here. I heard Jeff was telling me about yeah. that. If they start number one, I can do it because I'm one of those people. I don't watch live TV. So. <laughs> You should so just, skip like, just skip to season four. Just skip to season four because it's I'm you. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, but one of the clips I saw, it sounded, you know, it sounded authentic enough for me. Uh, but I was wondering, do they establish in the show that you are from another country and you come to this other country? Do you speak the same language or your character has learned that language? I would have had to learn. So okay. obviously I can converse with the people of Kattegat. So it's as if I've learned. Okay. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Like, there's plenty of Yeah, people were like, movies. that was quick that yeah. she kind of jumped in there. Um, yeah, so it's assumed that I would have learned their language. And then I would have learned Frankish, which is mm -hmm. French, um, because I was a slave kidnapped and brought to, to Paris. So I would have learned Frankish as well. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I'm just very linguistic. Yes. Yes. You're intelligent. Well, if you're emperor's daughter, exactly. yeah, you should Let's be educated. Say that. Yeah. You know, you should know all those things. <laughs> How, was there any um, crazy stories you can tell from set? Mm. Funny, weird, happy accidents. Yeah, Travis is um, 
infamously known to be a very big prankster. Oh. So you always have to stay clear of that. <laughs> I literally kept my distance. Okay. Like, if he came near, near me, I'd be like, no, no, you stay over there because you would either light me on fire or do something and I'd get in trouble for ruining my costume. So you cannot come near me. <laughs> you can't be like, he did it. Is no, me? God, no. I mean, everybody oh. knows it would be him. But what happened? Like, he's he's tied me to a boat as I was exiting, and I almost <laughs> fell. It was not fun. Um, he threw, like, a live frog down someone's dress. Like, he just is up to, I don't even know where he got the frog. Like, where? <laughs> so, yeah, you always Nobody's just, reciprocated on him yet? I don't think we can. Like, we've you tried. You guys should team up. No, I think we've tried. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, apparently he's, like, put a live goat in people's trailers or filled cars with trash like he's oh man yeah and yeah <laughs> i yeah he, just be careful be on your toes on site i literally was i kept to myself if ever he's there i'm like no <laughs> come back up don't give me any eye contact because he'll just do oh yeah any other things you can share well you asked me like what uh, ooh, did you ever have wardrobe malfunctions of any kind? Um, no. Oh. I always, I always got in trouble for not wearing my life jacket on the boats. Oh, you guys had to wear life jackets on the boats? Yes, they were very, um, safety first. Is that when you're not filming or do you have it underneath the outfit? When we're not filming. Okay. And I'd always just not wear it. Um. Anybody fall in the but water? But then, no. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh. Maybe. I don't remember. No. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> no, I don't maybe, think so. Sort of. okay. I don't think so. Okay. But they, the reason why I wouldn't wear it was because they have those, that pulley uh -huh. that inflates and then you're just like a floating body. So Travis I would go just... around pulling these things. You'd always have to hide the little knob, but then they're like, no, don't hide it oh, just wow. in case you need it. Or um, you wear it one time and you get tied to a boat by the, it's just, yeah. Fun times, Quite a guys. challenge. Yeah. I mean, we, when you're not acting, you have to be very alert when Travis is. He'd throw food at you. Yeah. Food. Hmm. He actually, I didn't get the worst of it. Okay. I kind of, I think I'd like to think I got into his good books very early on. Get it. So, but the thing was, you're on boats, so there's no crafty. There's no food. So okay. when they bring you snack bags, that is like your lifeline. You guard uh, that peg like it's your baby. Will he steal your food? Well, I mid bite of an apple, and he'll just come and take my apple and chuck it at like the boat across the <laughs> river from us. You're like, but that's my I'm food. I'm like, I do. Yeah, or like I'd have to hide chocolate bars, like <laughs> under like, the legs. under the burlap sacks and <laughs> like all the props, and then I'd come back to it and it's half eaten, and I would just like death stare him i'm like that was my only source of energy would he maniacally like be laughing there were at moments people? yeah okay. of course he's yes he would wait to he's watch a man the... child sometimes yeah. not afraid to say that well based on those stories i think you're right on the mark there <laughs> i hope i don't get in trouble for telling these stories i bet somebody else has relayed these stories if they're that i'm yeah i'm sure know. yeah 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 how was the food over there, actually? I mean, it was you know, good. set food's interesting. and Oh, they were great. Okay. Oh, I mean, come on. I'm free food <laughs> on set. Pretty awesome. Like food. Yeah. Did they ever do, like, uh, did they ever try to be, like, authentic Irish dishes and stuff? There were. What's it, um, like, cabbage and, and mm -hmm. bacon, which is, like, cabbage and ham. Mm. Um, what else? I mean, we're... We're on an island, so, like, the seafood in Ireland was amazing. Mm -hmm. And, like, their beef and their chicken. I mean, everything was Irish butter. Hmm. So good. I've never eaten that much butter in my life in that six months. <laughs> Just on everything. Did they ever have to adjust your costume with all this yummy food? <laughs> okay, that's rude. Um... <laughs> I'm just no, I don't think so. I don't you. think you so. Look lovely. But on Disney, they did. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Uh, I love food and the craft table was there so crafty literally is evil well yeah and on, I, i'm not saying that but i'm not on saying Vikings, there's no crafty <laughs> there's no craft table in yeah. ireland um like you just wait for lunch and dinner mm -hmm. but on disney like there was a tent and no one ate any of it so i would just go in between sets like in between shots i'm like <laughs> if you need me you know where i'll be i was literally snacking at the crafty table to the point where the craft the crafty men would know me and they would be like, Diane, we bought you more 
treats. Try You gotta try this. Like, it got to be a problem. Yes, for sure I took out my costume for that. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Craft is evil, though. It's like, how can you oh say no God, with all the... this? When, they, when you have all this food there, you're like... I personally think it's the best thing ever. So it take advantage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love it. And is there any other projects you're working on right now? Or, I mean, you said hi- hiatus for Vikings. So. Hiatus for Vikings. Um... I did a I did a project before the Christmas break. I don't want to say anything because I don't know any air dates. Sure. Um, but that was like a like a comedy, romantic comedy. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't know the details, so I don't want to lie to you. Okay. Um, How was it to do a romantic comedy after doing Vikings? Was it even a romantic comedy? It was a comedy. Okay, how's it to do that. a comedy after Vikings? Because Vikings doesn't really look like a comedic show. No, it's I, it was great. I mean, I did a little. I did a pilot of a sitcom and. Mm-hmm. I love comedy um, when it comes, and even this pilot season, being able to audition in the different pilots and shows, mm-hmm. so it's fun. I mean, you. I mean, that's the beauty of acting. Like, you get to try all these different things, and I think it's great if you can do both comedy and drama. And it's yeah. quite a skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your favorite to do? Drama. Drama. Because it's harder. Challenge. For me, it's like way scarier than than comedy. So I always. I mean, not that I'm saying I'm funny and good at comedy, but no, I you're just not love funny drama. At all. No, I don't think so. Oh, just kidding. You're adorable. Oh, You're hilarious. hilarious. Uh, do you feel, have you had to do like the cry on cue and stuff like that? If you watched the show, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is spoilers for people who haven't watched it too. Um, yeah, there was, it's funny because on that show it's just all like brutality and blood yeah. and whatever, sex. And so there's not a lot of, um, I don't know how to explain it, but I literally was in an acting class, and my teacher was like, well, I mean, how much grind did you really do in Vikings? Because the episodes hadn't come out yet. Oh. And, um, and then literally, I swear, in every episode, I'm cr- like, there's a tear shed. It uh-huh. got to the point where I'm like, okay, for future shows, let's not cry every episode as a choice. But, yeah. Did you have to warn your parents with all the swearing or anything like that? There's no swearing, but there is oh, a okay. lot of, like, sexiness mm-hmm. involved in one particular episode. I don't think they've even watched any of it. Okay. Is that what is that like as a woman doing something sexy and then it going out there mm-hmm. and knowing that guy who liked you in high school, that one person you've met, and all I've these people could have that. S- Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or or like your parents or grandparents, like is mm-hmm. it ever something you've considered, or you know you are working on your craft, and so that's not necessarily a concern. It's definitely a concern. I'm I have very traditional, strict mm-hmm. Asian parents. Um, so I I I politely asked my dad not to tune in to this season. I don't know if he has. If he has, he has not told me. We do not talk about it. I don't. If I knew he watched, I don't think I could look at him in the eyes. But um, of course, I think about that. I think in this industry, unfortunately, women um, are sometimes put in a position where. They feel like they have to do mm-hmm. the nudity or, or mm-hmm. you know, kind of exploit that sexuality. Um, so that's always at the forefront of when I'm doing projects. And with this one particularly, it was in my contract that it's a possibility. Mm. Um, and to me, like, I'm, I'm very proud of, of what we shot. And it mm-hmm. was, in my eyes, very tasteful. And it could have been... A lot more overtly sexual. Mm, mm-hmm. um, so for future projects, I'm not sure how I'll feel. You know, come this year, or next year, whatever my next project is that involves that. But it's definitely something that I think about because it's nerve wracking. It's terrifying. Sure. Yeah. Well, and it, it depends on the context too. Because exactly. it's one of those. Are you just putting this in there to be gratuitous? Exactly. Or does this matter with the character, it, with the storyline? Exactly that. So yeah. everything kind of comes into account, and then. You know, luckily we had a very closed, intimate set where mm-hmm. it was like three or four people in the room. Mm-hmm. That was including Travis and the director. So it was just they made sure that I was the most comfortable I could be. And then you know, nothing nice is shown. Mm-hmm. It's just which was I was grateful for. You know, so it's more on the implied. Yes. Well, yes. We'll just let people watch, watch it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then not implying anything but that's mm-hmm. uh, something going back um let's speak of implied not implied was there so you had to work on an accent for the show a little mm-hmm. bit was there any other sort of training you had to do or for viking yeah um because i mean descendants you already had a dance background that yes. definitely helps yeah so for vikings was there any sort of prep i i would have jumped on 
if they said like let's go into battle we're doing <laughs> fight like, scenes like I'm all for <laughs> it and um so there was there was that and you know I got to work with a horse for for oh, like a week which was mm -hmm. awesome because we had a scene where Travis is just gonna pull me onto a horse and we're just gonna ride away okay um but have you done much horse riding before then or a little bit not okay. I mean I'm not gonna say I'm like a professional once or twice but I will say I'm a horse in the Chinese zodiac so I believe ah. we have a special bond Seriously, though, every time hey. I see a horse, it's sure. very special. Um, so there, that's the great thing about that show was that, you know, if you wanted to, you could be as much involved. Sometimes you have to do the fight scenes. Mm. and So it's very physical mm -hmm. um, for, for Vikings, which was great. That'd be fun. Yeah. Funny enough with the accent, hmm. the only person I really worked with until later on was Travis. So no one heard my accent oh. and no one knew my accent. And the running joke was... Um, we convinced Alexander, who plays Bjorn on the show, that my accent was like, what did they call it? Like a French Cajun, like, like Caribbean meets French. Can you do a sample of it right oh, now? Oh, God, no. Because I wasn't <laughs> the one who said it. Oh, no, no. You're what you do on the show, just so people no, listen don't do to that to me. No, oh, no, no, you're like, I don't Not on the no, spot. Not on the spot. But for months, he thought I did like this Caribbean French... So there's your jokester on something else, right? But I, so I had to play a, play along, and then Gustav would actually do it for him. And for months, he was like, that's such an interesting choice <laughs> that you did. I mean, I guess that's possible because, you know, you could have come from anywhere. And oh, nice. He'd call the producers being like, that was a really, you let her do that, hey? Like this French, <laughs> okay, that's great. And then the run, it was on him that we broke to him that, yeah. I did that in summer camp. I pretended I had a... Australian accent for the week. I and pretend at the that end, I have a I'm British accent that I'm English because I'm hanging out with my. No, stop. <laughs> I should not put myself in these positions. Well, because it's fun to hear. But yeah, it is. It is different when you're just gonna jump into it, or yeah. if you practice it, because or sometimes if you're gonna slip out of it, you know. How hard was it to make sure you stayed in the accent, or did you ever have to be like, hold on, let me do that. Can we do another take? Like, did you ever have moments where the accent you felt like, eh, I want to do it again. Uh, yeah, there was moments, and then Paul, the dialect coach, would mm. be on set if anybody, if it was, but his thing was, you'll only see him if something's wrong, so he'll, like, hide in the back. Oh. Um, so if something was off, or, like, if my T's weren't pronounced properly, or uh, technicalities, yeah. and then also ADR in post-production, mm. if something was really terrible. Oh, like, yeah, I said hard. dynasty, and it was supposed to be dynasty, like, little, ah. very finicky things like that would, could always be fixed in post. Well, they're trying to be authentic. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I bet the ADR would be hard because you're coming back to an accent later because then you're like, can I listen to what I did before just so I can make sure it's yeah, the same Yeah, or thing? even for the emotional scenes to mm. make sure that you're still in that mindset is always hard. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people prefer to do everything in post. Mm. I don't think I would. It's You're just not there physically anymore yeah. or so and mentally. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of preparation would you have to do to get in that emotional state for the ADR sessions? Luckily, I didn't have to do any. Oh, good. Because you nailed the it on set. Well, no, the sound department nailed it ah. so that I didn't have to do it in post. <laughs> yeah. Um, give credit to them. They're amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But the director actually called me the night before my ADR, and she's like, if they make you do it, you, I will come and hunt you down if you're not in the same emotional state. Like, it was great. It would be terrible if they made you redo it. So oh. I was so nervous, and then it ended up I didn't have to. So <laughs> nice. a bullet. Nice. Yeah. And then we're getting towards the end, but uh, yeah. kind of a quick question. Another two is, um, how many different directors are over the show? You know, some television shows have different ones every single episode. Mm -hmm. What is it like working? Is it did you have did you have a consistent director, or was there different ones? And what was that like working with the different ones? Um, we had different directors for each block. Okay, so it would be either be two to three episodes each block. Okay. Um, so the first three, I didn't get to work with him mm -hmm. very much because my character was just mm -hmm. in the establishing stages. Mm -hmm. But then the second block was Helen Shaver. And those two episodes were really when my character, um, you got to meet my character and her history. So those mm -hmm. two were very special to me. And it was lovely that it was such a collaborative mm -hmm. experience. And she always made sure that, you know, Travis and I were very comfortable and knew what was going on and mm. for her vision and ours mm -hmm. to be met. And then um, Ken Garotti was the third director that we worked with. So he did two or three episodes, mm -hmm. I think. And, you know, meeting, that's the great thing about TV is that you do get to meet 
a handful of different directors and each director, you know, their style is different. Sure. So Helen was a, like very much a, an actor's director where okay. she understood, because she is an actor as well, mm. she understood mm -hmm. what goes on in front of the camera, where some directors are more, um, you know, how it looks. And so mm. the technicality mm -hmm. of we need to hit this line and this line and this line. So to be able to um, work with that and then kind of adjust to different directors was really interesting for me because I'd never done that. I've only done one director at each project. You're constantly on your toes with this Very show. much. And then like, <laughs> and then we're ways. reading the scripts and we're like, oh, this person dies and, oh and we don't know. So we're calling uh. up like each cast member like, oh my God, did you know you were leaving? Or, you know, uh. yeah. Well, uh, on, in a nutshell too, mm -hmm. you've, you've said before that Vikings isn't just a violent show. No. There's more to it. You Absolutely. Want to elaborate? Um, well, this season in particular, I'd say the, f I mean, we're on episode I think episode six just aired, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, up to now, they've developed, they were able to develop um, so many characters and kind of, you know, like we finally get to see Bjorn become mm -hmm. a man and, mm -hmm. and you know, Lagertha taking back her earldom. And um, so there's been a lot of building of characters, which is lovely, and it didn't just jump right into battle and gore. Mm. But there's a sense of, like, it's just so wonderful to see a show where the relationships are really taken care of. And, you know, hmm. this season alone, Ragnar is not who he used to be, or the fans know him as this um, vibrant king who's young and, and eager. And now, you know, he's they've aged the show, so he's a little bit older and mm -hmm. jaded and sad since um Appleston's death mm -hmm. from last season so it's just we got to touch on that a little bit more this mm. season which which I really appreciate that definitely sounds like more than it's it's more than meets the eye absolutely I mean when I first watched the show I couldn't I watched two episodes and I'm like okay I can't because I like <laughs> tuned into of course all the epic ah, gory battle scenes mm -hmm. but then you really go into it more and there's all these beautiful relationships between you know and we've got the French and the English and the Vikings so there's mm -hmm. all these different storylines that come in and yeah do you feel it's like a mini history lesson yes I didn't know are much about pretty, Vikings uh, they try to be as historically accurate, okay. accurate as possible like but obviously fiction it's, Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a TV show, yeah. so Michaels writes characters yeah. as he has, but, you know, certain things he, you know, there is truth behind it of, you know, the history of where they came from, and yeah. That's cool to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you working on right now that you can tell people to go look at? Or nothing just yet, wait for Vikings? I'm, I'm primarily, right now, um doing the Vikings press cool. kind of tour, yeah. All right, and where can people find you? Oh, um, I don't have a Facebook. People think I have a Facebook, but I don't. Um, so but in on, case you find one, it's not hers. But on Twitter, <laughs> it's um, at Diane Doan, two okay. N's in Diane. And then on Instagram, it's Diane L. Doan. All right. Yeah. Well, that's, we're at the end. Oh, we're done. Yeah, that's it. So you survived. See, I it did. wasn't that bad. I know what my heart is pumping. Oh, why? You were fantastic. Nervous. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It was lovely hearing about me. the show. Of course. And so people go find her online because if you want those behind the scenes stuff, that's where you're going to go. Uh, again, my name is Carrie Lane. You can find me online at Carrie D. Lane on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Carrie Lane Actor. And again, thank you to, to the lovely thank Diane you. on Vikings. So go watch Vikings. <laughs> Go catch up if you haven't watched it like myself or um, <laughs> get ready for the new one and look out for this talented young lady. Oh, shucks. Oh, and Thanks, again, guys. thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow us online on After Buzz TV, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all those. Make sure to subscribe, thumbs up, and leave comments because we'll see if you read them <laughs> later. Oh, I'll read them. <laughs> again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.